Welcome all to the session of Secured and Managed APIs. We are going to three talks today uh, with very, very interesting topics and a QA session of And the first speaker, Terhe Kivinen from ENVO. Please welcome to this. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Okay. Yeah, well, hello. Uh, my name is Terhi Kivinen, and on my behalf, a very warm welcome to this virtual API Days Helsinki 2020. Uh, we know, we all know that during the spring, we've had quite exceptional times, and except, especially during these times, connectivity and ability to collect and transfer information across different channels and devices has become more important than ever before. APIs are the ones which make these things possible and they enable offering seamless digital experiences. However, to succeed, APIs should also be managed uh, in the right way. And in my presentation, I'm going to focus on how to avoid pitfalls in API management. Okay, so about the agenda, agenda of today, my speech. Um, I'm first going to tell you briefly about myself and my current employer, Enfo. Uh, then I'm going to introduce you to the subject with discussing the elements of successful API setup and the needs for API management. After that, I will describe API management as a whole and its components and then talk about how to avoid the actual pitfalls or at least try to avoid them. Then I'm going to give a brief summary of the subject. Okay, so first, briefly about me. My current role, I'm a project manager at ENFO, uh, which is an IT consultancy company. Um, I work in the integrations team in Finland, which means that I'm uh, responsible for overall delivery of the integration projects for our customers. Uh, I mostly work with Azure products right now. Before Enfo, I worked uh, at Actia Bank as a community manager and a product owner uh, in the BSD scene. I used to help the third party providers and uh, be responsible for the BSD2 uh, APIs built by Actia Bank. Uh, before that, I have a longer experience at a financial management software company, Accountor Finago. Uh, I used to work there as a partner manager and integrations lead. Uh, there I also worked with APIs. I used to uh, work with the development team and give them feedback about APIs and be responsible for the developer portal there. As uh, my education, I'm a Bachelor of Arts actually from linguistics and soon hopefully to be Master of Business Administration. And I live in Espoo, which is a southern city in Finland, and I'm speaking to you from my cozy home office right now. Okay, then let me introduce you briefly uh, to my current employer, which is Enfo. Uh, the company's history is actually quite long. It dates back until 1964, until the company was uh, founded uh, in Kuopio which is a city located in Eastern Finland. 
Today it's 56 years later and there are altogether 900 or even more experts enabling the customers data-driven business transformation. Enfo is purely Nordic IT service company operating both in Finland and Sweden and we have 12 offices. Uh, we support around 370 customers currently uh, in the complex scene of platforms, applications and data. The customer base Enfo has uh, ranges from public organizations and local government to private companies with local as well as global reach. Okay. As I said, I work in the integrations team. As you can see, that's only a small part of the Enfo's uh, services. We also have uh, cloud management to business intelligence and access management analytics, very quite vast offering. Um, mainly we offer consultancy and we do joint projects together with uh, our customers and partners. Okay. Now I'm going to introduce you to the subject uh, by presenting first the three pillars of successful API setup and discussing which are the most important needs for API management. Okay, if we think about a traditional integration delivery setup, uh, the integration usually tends to be a separate delivery unit there. However, when we start working with APIs, uh, it's not only a technology change, but for the most part, it's also a cultural change. Naturally, you have to have in place a good technology platform, uh, which is uh, easy to use. It fits the needs, it supports on-premise SaaS APIs. Uh, and uh, also you have to uh, focus strongly on driving the API strategy and mindset and encourage collaboration inside the company. Therefore, with the API setup, if you want to really succeed with that, you need three pillars, people, platform and processes. In this presentation, I'm going to focus on mainly on these two pillars, platform and people, and how they can complement each other and help you to avoid the pitfalls in API management. So if we first look at the um, API management as a whole, what's it, what is the goal of it? Uh, the actual goal of API management is to facilitate the creation of those user-focused apps that support our business needs. Therefore, the API management needs to support four categories, um, discovery, modernization, reporting, and monetization. Um, this discovery part, uh, that's, uh, we need to have a developer portal so that our APIs really, really need, have to be discoverable. Otherwise, it, it won't be found by developers. We also want to facilitate the usage of our APIs by giving examples uh, of different API calls. We want to give examples of, of error, possible error messages there and provide support. Uh, we also want to modernize. We want to design APIs, which our consumers want to consume by using the outside in approach, which kind of uh, means that uh, we think about what our consumers want and build our APIs through that and don't only like mirror the information inside to outside. We want to open our backend systems to provide the information as a service so everyone can use it when they need. Of course, when we have APIs, we want to uh, have visibility. We want to analyze the reports about the usage malfunction. This gives us a base when we can uh, gain ability to proactively develop the APIs. 
and APIs are quite a big investment. So we also want to monetize them. We want to drive revenue from our data and services. We want to do it both directly and indirectly. And that's a base for the foundation for the API economy where we want to have. Okay. Well, now I'm going to go through the API management as a whole. And after that, I'm going to dig deeper to the different functionalities separately. This is an API management overview. And uh, in general, it can be seen to include these four functionalities. Everything starts from the integrated development environment where, where the actual APIs are implemented. After that, they are published via product management and user portal. Uh, API gateway is the one through which all the traffic from the application to the API implementation is flowing. It provides us metrics, which, is, which are used by the third component here, which is product, API product management. In API product management, uh, the actual usage of the APIs is managed uh, in addition to the developer portal users. And of course, the API user portal, that is in other words, developer portal offers the documentation gives uh, ability to discover our APIs, find, find new things there, registrate, and of course, request for support in different channels. Yeah, oh, here's the first, first one of the different elements, API user portal, that is developer portal. Uh, the API management products usually provide API user portals. There are pre-built ca capabilities for the different requirements, among other things. Uh, API user portals usually provide easy access and understanding on how to use the available APIs. They also give us ability to track who's using our APIs. Uh, of course, communication is really crucial between API consumers and API providers. Uh, there's, there needs to be, uh, well, information about different version releases or, or error situations and otherwise. And of course, enabling user support is really important here. Then, uh, in addition to acting as a proxy to implementation and providing the different metrics, API Gateway is enforcing agreements on API use and security. Mm, for example, uh, the API key is often the first element used by a provider to track the API use. API management products usually enforce the usage parameters that our API providers and API users agree upon in several ways. Uh, this includes, for example, use of secure sockets layer, SSL, or digital signatures for added security. The use of OAuth 2 to allow the API providers, customers to authorize access to their data and quotas and rate limits for, for example, how many API calls an API user can make. Usually API management solutions, uh, they use an API gateway. In most cases, one is already embedded in the solution and they enforce security and access control. Then the API product management. This is the functionality which allows the product managers to optimize the value to the API provider. API products uh, provide usually analytical tools to uh, make us understand how the APIs is are used, uh, configuration tools for product managers to directly change access limits and other usage parameters. And of course, communication tools for integration, interactive collaboration with uh, developer communities. 
uh, API product management uh, is also the one uh, which helps us monitor API both for use and misuse, and therefore also develop and protect it accordingly. Product management also uh, involves API lifecycle management from actual introduction until deprecation. Okay. Within the last four slides, uh, API management solutions really uh, contain the necessary functionalities and therefore they fulfill the technical needs for API management practices. However, I would say that the platform won't really solve in, in everything. And uh, as we see next, to avoid the pitfalls, we need the other pillar, which is people, to complement it if we really want to achieve a successful API setup. Okay. The first bullet point uh, in, in this slide is actually probably the hardest thing to do on this list because it requires often uh, changes in company culture and really ways of working. Um, so this is encouraging collaboration, especially between IT and business. Uh, one step could be moving towards agile development methods, as for example, SAFE, which is scaled agile framework, which really, uh, from my own experiences, makes business and IT talk with each other. Okay, another bullet point uh, is, of course, that when we have uh, developed something, we cannot usually have uh, without any consumers. We usually have at least one consumer lined up to use, use it and give us feedback. And uh, there are probably more consumers coming and uh, we want to have, have a great uh, API for additional consumers also. We have to therefore create channels for the user feedback, at least an email address or web form and ensure that we have resources processing it. Also, API roadmap is a very good recommendation to be created because uh, most likely someone will ask it from, the, from, from your organization or from other organizations who are using, using your APIs. Uh, then, well, continue developing. This one's actually is led from the second bullet point. Uh, if you if you want to offer your API consumers a good experience, you listen to their feedback and you keep developing your product based on that. Then, of course, choose a platform which fits your needs. Uh, the platform won't, of course, solve everything, but uh, it really helps. It's uh, recommended to act with it as any business critical solution as ERP. You might have to do some kind of requirement analysis and based on based uh, your choosing, uh, based your solution which you want to choose uh, on that. Okay, then uh, of course, the first thing is that you should treat your APIs as products. API management solutions generally enable creating their products, but their planning and designing is usually done by people. So uh, if you're creating an API for external use, you could, for example, collaborate with your marketing and sales team and do some kind of uh, research among the potential API consumers to find out what kind of APIs they would really need. Then uh, security and performance uh, API management platforms uh, include these functionalities, but it's not a universal security solution. You have to have the experts from your security side and really, really keep in mind uh, these security practices regarding data filtering, rate limiting, authentication and authorization. Support resources is the one, well, uh, unfortunately, which is very often forgotten with APIs. Um, you have to have some kind of support channels. You have to have resources for, for your support. 
you could use, for example, your own solution support, but usually this means quite thorough training for them. And your developers should be at least on the second line, second line support. And uh, this usually takes the development or working time away from them, which is usually a big challenge for the organizations. And well, the final bullet point here is that don't, don't try to do everything yourself. APIs, API management, it's really big investment uh, on the resource side. You really need a lot of time, time and people around those. So, so it's recommended to ask for help, for example, some kind of uh, consultancy companies, for example, Enfo is one, one of who can help in these. Okay, so my short summary from this, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, working with APIs, it's, uh, it's not only a technology change, but for the most part, a cultural change. You will have to change the general mindset in the organization to support the API initiative. Mm, this can be done uh, more easily if you really have a strong uh, business case, really have calculated the numbers for, for it. Then you need to incentivize, for example, by rewarding the right kind of behavior. Uh, you will have to invest in the right systems, ensure visibility, automation and measure, which is working, which is not iterate and change until you really find what you have wanted to achieve by your APIs. And when designing, of course, always keep the customer in mind and think about concrete user cases. Okay, this was my presentation. Thank you very much if you have questions. So I think we have a couple of minutes left for them. Thank you, Terry, for the great presentation. Um, please send questions to the chat. And, uh, I actually have my first question. How would you recommend to get started with these API management practices when you have an organization who is starting with APIs, especially starting to publish APIs? What would be the first important steps to take? Mm -hmm. I think uh, probably the change management is really, really uh, important thing there that you start to like spread the word inside the company that you are like having the APIs and start training people really, really on that. And it's not only like one specific team, you need to like spread the word around, around the teams and units. I think that's that's like the one and uh, yeah, inform in different internal challenge ch uh, channels about those and and yeah, I think you have uh, some, have some kind of API advocate. <laughs> and how would you approach if you have a very large organization operating in multiple countries? How would you start introducing practices for API management? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's quite a hard, hard uh, task to do then if you have like multiple countries. Uh, I think you should probably have some kind of virtual team around that. You could have like different kind of API advocates in the different countries, which collaborate together and, and spread the word. Of course, it requires a lot of resources and it's kind of impossible to do probably, but, but I think that that would be the best way to do. So it would be best to start with small and start expanding the practices yeah. in the organization. Yes, I think so. And how would you spread these practices to the customers? Because the customers of the APIs are very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, uh, then the communication uh, through the customer challenge, channels, uh, I think it's good to have it like in the early stage, have information for your customers that you are really uh, publishing the APIs and even ask for like uh, some kind of opinions, what kind of APIs are needed. You will need the customers like uh, taken with you in very early stage so that you know know what to develop and, and where to go. 
uh, those are very that's very good advice for everybody, the, independent of the organization size and type. Thank you so much, Terhi. And now Thank you. we have a next uh, talk about the identity management for APIs. And this talk is presented by Patricia Lara. <laughs> 